Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for July 7th, 2017. This is episode 26 and we're going to do an Integrate 2017 highlight show. Now you may have noticed that last week there was no Middleware Friday episode and that was in part due to travel as I was making my way back from London to Calgary. But also what I've decided to do in the summer is to record every second week. You know, summers are short in Canada. I want to make sure I have opportunity to spend as much time outside as I can. So look for the show every second week, and I will continue to pump out more and more episodes of Middle or Friday. So in this show, I'm going to talk about highlights from Integrate 2017. Also, we've got an interview with Steph Jan Wiggers and captured his thoughts about Integrate 2017. And then I'm going to provide some links to some of the community recaps that people have posted. So first off, a special thank you to BizTalk360 who hosted this event. They once again did a tremendous job in bringing this event together. It was extremely well organized, great venue, great content, kept everything moving. Uh, so once again, they just did a fantastic job. And then also thank you to the sponsors. Uh, Microsoft was another key player in pulling this whole show off. Uh, they had several people, I think it was around 14 speakers um, coming in from Redmond and Charlotte to uh, participate in this event. And also the other sponsors, Codet, Bouvet, Solid Soft Reply, and Active Adapter for sponsoring this event. And lastly, the attendees uh, without the Without all of you, these types of events aren't possible. So certainly appreciate everyone who made a contribution in actually making this event happen. And have a bit of an announcement uh, on behalf of BizTalk360. They have announced that there will be an Integrate 2017 USA event, which is gonna happen at Microsoft's Redmond campus between October 25th and 27th, 2017. Uh, registrations will open up shortly so if you live on this side of the pond like I do you will now have an event that is much closer uh, to you than heading overseas so once again looking forward to participating in this event so let's dive into the content uh, first up was Jim Hare who's the group program manager for pro integration and he kicked off the event and he one of the things he did early on was to highlight the progress that the team has made since last Integrate, which was held May 2016. Now, you don't have to count all these dots. I've gone ahead and done that for you. But there's more than 40 different capabilities and features that these teams have collectively launched. And certainly, if you've been following Logic Apps and Logic Apps Live, you know that list is way longer than, than this list. Um, so these are, are some of the more major accomplishments. Um, all teams have been extremely busy rolling out new feature and giving customers more value. Now here's some feedback from Richard Sroder, you know, speaking to really the breadth and depth of the integration stack at Microsoft. And I would tend to agree that this is a very different team. This is a very different platform than what we've had in previous years. One theme that continues to be pushed, and for good reason, is the idea of better together. So this idea of combining your BizTalk and Logic Apps, API Management, Service Bus, Functions, and all of the other different Azure services in order to build some really compelling solutions. So here's an example here where you now have the ability to plug in cognitive services like text analytics, computer vision, and face API to really build some compelling apps. And here's some of the key takeaways from Jim Hare. And one thing that he really did talk about was this idea of uplifting integration people and really becoming problem solvers. And I talked a little bit about it in my presentation. It's this idea of getting away from purely automating transactions to actually automating insight and being that can-do type of person in order to deliver value to your clients or to the organization that you work for. 
And ultimately, more and more organizations are using insights to gain business efficiency. And you can actually do that when you start to take all of these different Lego blocks that exist within the Azure ecosystem and put them together to build a very compelling solution. Next up, we're going to talk about BizTalk Server and Tord, uh, who's the BizTalk PM, uh, reminded all of us that BizTalk Server is not dead. Um, there was, I guess, a little bit of confusion with some folks related to the Azure BizTalk Services retirement. So that was previously referred to as MABS. Um, Microsoft has identified a date for retirement around that, but BizTalk Server is very much alive and kicking. Uh, one thing that they did talk about was that if you are on BizTalk 2013 or 2013 R2, that you do have a mainstream support lifecycle date in the not so distant future. So this is something that you should be aware of um, as you, you know, use your BizTalk server. Another thing that was talked about was some of the connectors that are either available or becoming available soon. And one of these connectors is the Azure File Storage Connector. So this is something that has been in preview and something that's uh, very important files still make up a large part of integration scenarios. And certainly when you talk about hybrid, where you might have an agent sitting on-prem and you need to get that file up to the cloud, uh, you need some sort of a connector. So it's nice to see that this connector has reached general availability. Now let's talk about a little bit about some of the MVP sessions. Um, you know, I've called out a few here. There's too many to, to go through them all. So once again, not trying to uh, single people out, but it's every session was good. Every session was high quality and the content was great. So if you're not captured in one of these upcoming slides, uh, it's, it's, it's not a reflection of, of the, the session itself. But one thing I found interesting about this presentation from Mikael Hawkinson from Sweden was this idea of device state and really the idea of digital twins. And, you know, I've heard that term a fair bit, digital twin, but I guess I truly didn't understand what it means. And what it is, it's the ability to have essentially a virtual copy of that specific device. And what you're allowed to do is you have the ability to set desired states. And then what will happen using the IoT platform is it'll actually manage that state. So you can think of almost like a thermostat where you want to ensure, say, the temperature of a room remains within tolerance. And what you can do is actually set that desired state in your digital twin, and it will actually communicate, it being the Azure IoT platform, will actually communicate with the device in order to operate it within the parameters of that desired state. So this is, this is pretty important when you get into uh, industrial manufacturing and certainly in some of the power plant scenarios that we deal with where you wanna have safe operating limits or you might have just you know, business optimal operating limits and now having the ability to, to manage that state um, is actually pretty cool. Another presentation which I really liked was Richard Soroder's Cloud Native Integration. And in this presentation, he really challenged the status quo mindset of the traditional enterprise and really opened up my eyes and sort of challenged some of my assumptions and sort of philosophies around, you know, enterprise integration and really, you know, gave some food for thought. Um, in this particular slide, he's talking about this idea of hybrid integration platforms and that, you know, by 2020, more than 75% of large organizations will have one and they will also likely assemble these iPaaS or these hybrid integration platforms from multiple vendors, which I find to be pretty interesting. Uh, here's, a, here's a slide which talks a little bit about, you know, what it means to be cloud native. And, you know, it's this idea of breaking down silos and having balanced teams with shared objectives and really eliminating the, you know, traditional works on my machine type syndrome and having this very consistent, repeatable process um, available across all environments. This also this idea that, you know, changes are an asset, changes should be embraced. 
because when you're actually changing something, that means you're actually making progress. Now, another one was, um, and it certainly resonates, and it's just this idea of you know security via perimeter. And in a lot of enterprises, this is a very common platform. They call it security in depth. And what uh, Richard's suggesting, and I've heard this from others as well, is this idea of re repair, repave, and rotate. And it's this idea that you know organizations and assets will get compromised, and oftentimes this malware may sit undetected for you know weeks or months, only to be activated remotely. And it's this idea of you know the ability to repave different assets in part because you've got this consistent, repeatable, automated setup that allows you to essentially rid the machine or the asset of malware because you've essentially repaved the box. And so that's an interesting paradigm um, that really sort of changes the traditional mindset around security. Another interesting presentation came from Stephen Thomas. Uh, Stephen Thomas has done some production-related logic app deployments. And so he had <clears throat> some tips and tricks around logic apps for the enterprise. And so this is another session worth, worth watching once it's available. You know, the idea that logic apps is very simple to use when you get into the browser. And it is true, you can build some, some really interesting interfaces quickly. But there's always additional things to think about as soon as you try to take those into the enterprise where you have multiple environments and perhaps multiple teams, multiple team members that are actually building and deploying these types of interfaces. He also, that being Steven, announced that his BizTalk server administration course, which highlights BizTalk 360, will be available soon on Pluralsight. So if you have a Pluralsight subscription, I encourage you to keep tabs on that course and uh, keep your eye open for it. Another talk from Tord, he had a couple, and this was on day three. Uh, he talks about the need to migrate your previous BizTalk environments to BizTalk 2016. And this can be, well, I wouldn't say overly complex, the process. It can be fairly labor intensive when you start to, you know, migrate these applications and deal with file shares and the web services and binding files and all of those different types of BizTalk artifacts. Now, what's interesting is that he has, in his presentation, announced a tool, a BizTalk migration tool, that was developed by Microsoft IT uh, for running their business at Microsoft. And you can really think of this tool as an accelerator that will help you speed up your BizTalks upgrades. So I haven't had a chance to try this tool, um, but having recently gone through BizTalk 2016 upgrade, uh, this is certainly something that uh, I know we could have benefited from earlier. So uh, if you're thinking of upgrading to BizTalk 2016, I encourage you to check out this tool to see if it'll help you increase the velocity of your deployments. Another piece of news that Tord had for us was that the BizTalk connector in Logic Apps is now generally available. So this provides you with the opportunity from Logic Apps to call into a BizTalk process on-premise, uh, and this is using the on-premise data gateway as essentially a bridge between the iPaaS environment and your on-premise data center. Another interesting session was from Sandro, and he related to he related BizTalk to that of a high-performing cars. And what he did do is then associated all of the different components uh, within the car to you know, a BizTalk environment. And it, it was, um, if you haven't done any performance tuning before, I encourage you to check this session out because he step-by-step -step walks you through some very quick and simple configurations that can improve the performance of your BizTalk applications dramatically. So some of these tips I've used in the past, and um, it certainly is sort of a, a low friction way of, of getting more performance out of your BizTalk environment. Uh, Nino, our good friend Nino, he had an interesting session once again, and uh, one of the things that he talked about a little bit more was this chicken way. And he talked about it last year, I believe it was at Integrate last year, where he introduced the concept. And it's really this idea of, 
you know, people taking shortcuts when building out architectures, you know, it could be with BizTalk or, or without BizTalk, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so he's come up with this idea of the red card, you know, so if you're in, the, in a meeting and someone's trying to take the easy way out, um, you know, you pull out the chicken way card and basically call people's bluff and call them out and say, no, 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 let's do this right, let's do this the proper way. So another entertaining uh, session by Nino, so encourage you to check that out check that session out when it becomes available. Now, unfortunately, I did have to leave uh, for the last three sessions of the day, because um, I headed off to Dublin. But I wanted to call out, these are the three new MVPs, so I wanted to give them a little bit of screen time here. Um, I'll certainly be looking to watch these sessions once the recordings come out on BizTalk 360's website. But uh, they had some interesting things to talk about, so I'm looking forward to it. So Daniel Tume, um, who's from Australia, he talked about hybrid connections and the different options that developers have when building hybrid solutions. And he walks through some of the different pros and cons of each approach. Then we have Wagner from New Zealand, who talks about unlocking hybrid integration using BizTalk Server. So once again, a, a very timely session where you've got a mixture of logic apps, service bus, and biz talk. And you know, I'm certainly seeing this pattern a fair bit where you've got cloud integration or trading partner integration, you still have on premise assets, and you need the ability to plug in these different services. So, you know, this is a, a session that I'm looking forward to. And last but not least, Martin, who's also from Australia, talks about from zero to app in 40 minutes using Power Apps and Flow. So Power Apps and Flow are some pretty interesting tools that people can use to really accelerate the development and build some pretty interesting and powerful applications in a short amount of time. So we've rolled out a few Power Apps and it's a pretty neat technology. And so I'm definitely curious to see what Martin has cooked up here. I know he gave a similar talk at Ignite in Australia that was very well received. So I'm um, looking forward to, to watching this one as well. Another announcement um, in this time it comes from Martin. And this is that the organizers of the Azure Global Integration Bootcamp have announced a date, uh, Saturday 24th, March 2018 where once again there will be Global Integration Bootcamp. So I had the opportunity to go to New York last March and um, looks like the organizers have set a date and are looking for hosts. So if you're interested in hosting an event, you can reach out to the organizers at globalintegrationbootcamp.com. So one last slide from Jim Hare, where he's, um, you know, thanks everyone for attending Integrate 2017 and encourages us to keep unlocking the impossible to add business value. And I couldn't agree more with, with that uh, statement. Uh, a little bit about my sessions before I, you know, put on the interview with Steph Jan Wagers, and I talked about bots. And I really talked about two different types of bots one is very much a procedural type bot with a fixed menu. And you think of this bot being used in operational settings. So you can think of like field operations if you're like maintenance workers at a power plant or you work on a pipeline. And you want the ability to interact with all of these different systems using a conversational app. Now in this case I used Microsoft Teams and I was able to plug into the Microsoft bot service and therefore API gateways and Azure Logic Apps in order to connect into a bunch of different enterprise systems like ServiceNow, SAP, and a custom management of change application. Then the other bot that I created was more of a dynamic bot. And this was really in part to do to Lewis, which is the Language Understanding Intelligence Service. And it's this idea of making statements or utterances and having Lewis determine the intent. Once it understands the intent of what you're trying to achieve, 
it's able then to perform different actions. So I created this idea of a crypto bot that could interface with different uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in order to get prices. And then you could fictitiously, you know, buy or sell or get your position of this particular crypto asset. So that was just mocked up in Azure SQL. I wasn't about to hook that up to a real exchange, but certainly the ability to get pricing from an exchange, in this case called Quadriga, uh, was very real. So now let's have a, a brief chat with Steph Jan Wiggers. Uh, Steph Jan was also a speaker at Integrate 2017, so we'll hear a little bit more about his session and some of his final thoughts on Integrate 2017. So I'm here today with Steph Jan Wiggers. Uh, he, as you know, he's uh, participated in Middleware Friday before. Uh, so we just finished up Integrate 2017 in London. And we're currently in Dublin, Ireland, just doing some sightseeing post-conference. So I figured I'd take this opportunity to get a few minutes of his time to uh, talk about Integrate from his perspective. So, Steph Jan, you had presented on the business value of Logic Apps. Uh, why don't you right. tell the viewers uh, a little bit more about that session? Okay, so my session was more to get the perspective of the end users and the customers uh, adopting Logic Apps. So I interviewed about 30 people, <coughs> sorry, some of them which are on that Yammer group, you're one of them, and asked them, okay, what's the developer experience? What's the, um, what's the value? <coughs> what's your view, <coughs> sorry, what's your view on, on, the, on, the, on the Logic App um, service itself? So I kind of, you know, got response of all those, of those people I interviewed and kind of incorporated in that in my session including the perspective of what the iPaaS service actually really is in general, what the definition is and how Logic App fits into uh, to that definition. And it's kind of, you could see iPa um, sorry, you could see Logic Apps really as a true iPaaS uh, service because it's online, it's scalable, you use it through the browser, etc. It's kind of what on the, the definition is on Wikipedia. So I revealed that, I kind of showed some of the results um, in um, the Power BI dashboarding, so what the sentiment kind of is, comparable also to its predecessor, which was Bisoc Service. Mm -hmm. And Bisoc Service was, um, well, not completely fully matured or never got a chance to it or wasn't really fit for purpose to, to really do cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration, which you do have with, with Logic Apps. So kind of leveraged that a bit too, and in the end also showed some of the misconceptions. You know, it's not a silver bullet; you can just build everything with a logic app. Nor um, is it you know the same as Bisoc Server, right? It's a uh, Bisoc Server is an on-prem solution, pops up prime time based, while a logic app is really for cloud integration based more on triggers and events. So it's a complete different paradigm. So that's kind of a nutshell what I talked about. Cool. Now you also ran. Uh, sentiment analysis experiment. Yep. Like, what, what was some of the insight that you gained by by doing that? Well, that, that was quite interesting. So I kind of um, all the answers I got, I pushed through the cognitive search engine. So you talked right. about that too. So that was uh, the, what I used was the uh, detect sentiment, of course, and the other one was kind of you know get some of the catchphrases or the key phrases. Okay, so yeah, so yeah. I used two of those um, services or operations of that cognitive service. I didn't use the tech language because everyone replied in, uh, in English. Okay. So I used those. And then I pushed that um, data out into a stream data set within Power BI and then you can create all kinds of visualizations. So where did the answers come from? What's the, uh, what's the sentiment? Overall, it was like good or excellent, so positive. If it's 0.5, I had a few of those, then it's kind of neutral. It wasn't able to detect it, yeah. so it mm. plays the safe, yeah, the safe, safe. line. All right, so that was recorded. All of the sessions are recorded, so yeah. you'll be able to catch Steph Jan's session um, shortly once BizTalk360 goes ahead and publishes that. Now, sort of beyond your session, so what was uh, like some of the key takeaways or sort of key moments that you really enjoyed at Integrate this year? Well, I can tell you the first day was really interesting what the product group had to say around their product. Um, some of the interesting things were like, what, um, what's under the hood with Logic Apps? The other thing was being addressed is that there will be kind of a central management in OMS. So that's something that John Fancy revealed. Uh, you see that in the recording too. Some of the mock-ups which will be revealed later on. What I liked um, 
on the third day, for instance, was a perspective on, on integration today. So that was like by Nina Crudel and by Richard Zeroder. Uh, the second day, your session, uh, to combine with some other logic app session. Predominantly, most of the sessions were around logic apps because that's trying or is getting its momentum now because it's out there for a year. It was like G8 last year in July, mm -hmm. and now yeah. we're a year later, uh, and you see that it's got a grand uptake. Um, well, a fair bit of the audience was familiar with logic apps, some weren't, and I think they've kind of seen everything from what's under the cover, how does it relate to flow. Uh, how do you use it? Um, you friends with the bots. Um, the the product group did an end-to-end -end scenario, so you'll see that if you watch some of the videos as well. Mm -hmm. What the capabilities are, uh, John showed it more in the perspective of B two B messaging with the integration account. Um, some of the other sessions were uh, done by uh, the uh, service group, uh, group, product group. So Dan was and another person who did you know quite reveal some of the interesting stuff around the service bus. Yeah, it was like overall it was a good a good conference, um, spreading around all the kind of integration technology you could find in the cloud. Yeah, I think there was uh, definitely an emphasis on OMS, and I think that uh, Microsoft is making more investments in that and uh, having the ability to gain some of that insight around logic apps, telemetry, beyond some of the B2B stuff which we have today. So I think that was apparent. I think another thing that came up was that BizTalk is not dead. I think Tord, uh, Tord made that statement uh, several times, <laughs> and yeah. I think it's loud and clear. Um, I think you know they are working on a, an additional feature pack. No timelines were committed. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that was interesting is they did release the um, a tool, a migration tool that aids in the, the um, or expedites the uh, the amount of time it takes to upgrade your BizTalk solutions from one version to another. And I think there is a bit of a backlog when it comes to customers running BizTalk 2013 and BizTalk 2010 who are nearing or at the end of mainstream support depending upon which version you're at. So I think that's important. Another thing I took away was, um, you know, Jim Hare was, was talking a lot about this and it was this idea that sort of the integration is becoming cool once again and I think, uh, you know, even Clemens Vaster said this a year ago that it's, it's cool to be in middleware once again. And I think it's true, and I think it's also true that there's a, an evolution here happening where there's no longer a matter of like schema to schema or endpoint to endpoint. I think it's now with all of these different services and APIs that are available, is how do we actually compose some really innovative solutions in order to drive competitive advantages for the, the companies that you work for or consult for. So I think that was part of Jim's message, and I think it's pretty important to think about that uh, you know this world is evolving. And um, you know the integration skill set lends itself very well because people are are used to adapting because of the amount of change um, that you know just comes up when you're building these different types of interfaces. I think another one for me was really around Richard Sorotter's uh, presentation around being cloud native, and really you know what I would consider leaning out a lot of the processes that we have today because we've always done it a certain mm -hmm. way. And I think the the biggest thing I got out of it and had to look myself in the mirror was this idea of challenging the traditional enterprise mindset. And the traditional enterprise mindset is really risk adverse, it's really slow, it's really bureaucratic, and it's more about, it needs to be more about driving business value. And I think that was something that he really honed on. It's not about sort of the amount of lines of code you write or who writes them, it's more about are you actually delivering in the best interest of your business or customer. So. So those were some, some neat yeah. takeaways. I guess another uh, announcement that was made was that Integrate 2017 will also be occurring in um, the USA, so in Redmond at the end of October. Uh, so look for more announcements around that. I know certainly if you're living on that side of the pond, it's, it's difficult to get the justification to travel over to Europe, uh, but now it's going to be you know closer to you if, if that's yeah. the content you live in and it's gonna be on Redmond campus at the end of October. So once again, go ahead and look for that. So, anything else you wanna add uh, before no, we I, let go? What you said, you know, there's gonna be another Integrate US, so that's gonna be great. Um, yeah, so we were also able to, to speak there, so that, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you kind of, we, I think we both elaborated what happened on Integrate and what the key takeaways are, so we, you summarized, you know, we both summarized it pretty well, so yeah, there's not much else to add. So yeah, well, watch the videos, of course, once they're out.
Yeah, no, for sure. They, they will, I mean, we would imagine they'll likely trickle them out like they have in previous years, but uh, hats off to Biz Talk 360, yeah. uh, Microsoft, and the rest of the sponsors uh, for pulling this off. Biz Talk 360 did a fantastic job once again. Um, they've really sort of evolved from this technology company yeah. to this, uh, you know, yeah. event management company as well. So they've, uh, it was, everything went off without a hitch. So kudos to Saravana Kumar and the rest of the Biz Talk 360 team. They did a fantastic job. Uh, we saw some new also things this the, year. Also the attendees, right? Almost 400 for sure. showing up. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was um, I think 382 attendees mm -hmm. from more than 50 countries, which is which is pretty astonishing. Uh, we also saw some, I guess, the beginning of some yeah. new traditions where they're introducing people um, at the beginning and actually had yeah. uh, some uh, some mean, music yeah. as well, intro music. So that was uh, pretty interesting. You'll definitely want to check out Richard Siroder's uh, intro music because. Uh, he picked a great song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. Right. Uh, thanks again for watching Middle War Friday, and yeah. uh, we'll catch you on the next edition. So thank you, Steph Jan, for taking the time to participate in an interview. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these different links. Um, these will also be available in the comments section, so you don't have to type them out. But there was a few people that had uh, provided recaps uh, one actually was one that I provided for InfoQ, and I talked specifically around the news coming out of Microsoft and really some of the advancements that they've made. So I encourage you to click out that link. Uh, one area that I haven't talked about in this vlog, but is talked about in the InfoQ, is some of the progress that the Azure messaging team has made. So that's the Service Bus and Event Hubs team. Uh, they've got some astounding numbers in terms of the transaction throughput they put through event hubs and also there's a few new features that have been released including Azure event hubs capture which is formerly known as archive and I believe I talked about that in middle or Friday or earlier um, and the other they also talk about some of the things they're thinking about like encryption at rest and managed security identity and, and a few other things so check that out on infoq.com then we also have biztalk360 and Codet, a Microsoft partner, with some of their recaps. Now they do have multi-day recaps. I've only included day one. They've got links for day two and day three. So you'll be able to hit those pages uh, from these links. Once again, I want to thank BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. And we'll catch you in two weeks. So that will be July 21st where we will talk some more about integration.